who are you? My name is Zane Lowe. Zane Lowe, welcome to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Yes, it's great to meet you. The keynote. Yes. Thank God it's over. You are headlining. That's bold. In a way. It's still bold. You even, are the- even in a way, it's bold. And to welcome you to South by, I have a gift for you. The Hip Hop Family Tree by Ed Pisker. Can I keep this? Yes, that is for you. God. Because if we open it up to the anointed pages. Yes, Grandmaster Flash, uh, the legendary, one of the originators, one of the greatest of all time. And uh, his music uh, changed my life. And we also see like Spoonie Cool Herc. Spoonie G, the godfather. By Ed Pisker. Isn't this amazing? This is the history. Unbelievable. Look at this. This is incredible. Where did you find this? Uh, Ed Pisker. Wow, this is amazing. Hip hop family tree. We also have the world class wrecking crew, pre NWA. Yeah, that's right. Have you ever talked to Dr. Dre about pre NWA? I think the one time we saw, I spoke to Dr. Dre about that came up was when we were talking, he was going to do his radio show, going to start his radio show on Beats One called The Pharmacy. And at one point we said, why don't you DJ? Like, why don't you get the decks out? And he's like, man, I haven't done that for a long time. But he said he still had them. The original so you decks. were close to getting world-class stories. Close to possibly getting Dre back on the decks, which would have been huge. But So that is for you, Zane. I can't believe you gave this to me. The Hip Hop Family Trees. Incredible, look at this. Thank you, Noah. By Ed Pisker. Speaking of the early days, thank you, Cousin Garth. Garth Brooks? No, your cousin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. How did you? Yeah, co- that's right. Cousin Garth. That was um, someone who, who was instrumental in putting me onto Deep Purple. Oh, that's right. That was the first song um, I ever remember listening to. Yeah. Smoke on the Water. But you got into rap through Video Dispatch? That's right. I did. It was uh, that was the after school program that I watched when uh, and that was the the um, the report was uh, was about a tour that was going around America at the time, and uh, it was like a two minute thing, and I and that's when I discovered sort of rap music. Yeah. Two fifty two fifty six records and Kirk Kirk Harding, yeah, who's uh, st- to this day remains a very good friend of mine, and uh, yeah, he was one of the guys behind the counter who I used to go and harass for records. Yeah, two fifty six legendary record store in Auckland. And you were into Donahue. That's right. I used to watch a lot of Donahue, Phil Donahue's show. That was a uh, it was a big show in New Zealand. And uh, when I was when I was not working, and I went through a sort of six month phase where I wasn't really doing much with my life, so I'd, I'd watch a lot of Donahue because it was still around on around lunchtime. See no quote because uh, beats set the pace. Ain't a worse thing to face than a party full of peeps playing Ace of Bass, Ace of Bass. That was uh, that was a lyric that uh, yeah from one of our songs back in the day. Urban disturbance. Urban disturbance was the name of our group. Yep. Urban disturbance got you into Dolly magazine. Did was there an article in Dolly magazine on us back in the day? Probably. That's pretty mean. Like, Urban Disturbance yeah. was quite popular. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I think what we were was um, we were passionate about what we did, and we loved to make, you know, music together. Come on, Ice-T, Public Enemy. We supported Ice-T and Public Enemy, but then everybody supported Ice-T and Public Enemy. There was, like, four or five rap groups that all got 15 minutes on that show. And uh, I remember that show because my shoe fell off. Did you hear, were you going to go there? My shoe fell off in the first song. And, and fell into the into the photography pit. So I was, I was on stage with one with one shoe on at one point. What can you say, Zane, about the history of New Zealand hip hop? The Upper Hutt Posse. Yeah, Upper Hutt Posse. D word. Um, these guys are, in my opinion, the originators in New Zealand. They were sort of the first rap group, to my mind at least, that I remember coming out of New Zealand. And um, they're absolutely legendary. And if you listen to their music now, like it's it sounds it still sounds incredible to me. And you did a lot of producing back then. Damn native. Damn native. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable rapper. One of my favorite rappers of all time to this day. I love I love Danny. And there was also like Sister Underground. Sisters uh, of the Underground, wasn't it? So Sisters Underground. Yeah, Sisters Underground. Uh, in the neighborhood was the song. And there was Three the Hard Way. Uh, and there was Joint Force. And MC Square. MC Square. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And MC OJ. MC OJ and Rhythm Slave. That was pre Joint Force. Shouts to those guys. We did some touring with him. I think it's amazing that your band, Leaders of Style, what we were before we were Urban Disturbance, were on Flying Nun. That's right. We well, we put one song out on Flying Out on a compilation called Real Swingers, I think it was called. It was like a compilation full of New Zealand music. But yeah, that, that was a proud moment because obviously Flying Nun's a legendary label. I wanted to ask you about that actual compilation, Freak the Sheep. Tell me you actually have this. Yes, you have this. 
And if we open it up, what's crazy about this is that it, you know because I'm flying nun, flying nun, amazing. And uh, wow, look at this, Leaders of Style, real swingers. You want me to read it? Yeah. Formed in 1990, Leaders of Style Sound is one that refuses to conform, and it embodies their living environment combined with real life experiences and their vibrant and youthful attitudes. Exciting and often surprising music. Obviously, we didn't write that. It's a very nice thing to say. I think it's amazing you were on Flying Nun. Yeah, me too. And I, I was, like I said, I was proud to be a part of that. Look, head like a hole, man. They're an incredible band. <laughs> and there we have early Zane Lowe, right? Tinnitus? <laughs> uh, right, you mean there? That's, yeah, that was me in the middle there trying to look casual while I was leaning on it. And you were called a different name back then, weren't you? I was, yeah. I was uh, Lays, L-A-Z-E. How long did that last? About six months. <laughs> You did a lot of touring with a dat player. Yeah, I, yeah, we did. Yes, we did. We did. Back then, that was we felt that was the best sound quality for our music. But it was very difficult to um, to to create any sort of uh, dynamics or anything with a dat player because it would take like ten seconds to kick in and play. So it wasn't the fastest paced use of music but it was it sounded good but roger with a lot of these kind of bands because there wasn't any way to really there wasn't an audience for our music look let's be honest not a lot of people were digging urban disturbance so we had to go and and support other bands to find an audience and they, and um you know in between to, you know along with touring some with other rap groups we also toured um around new zealand with some bands on flying nun and it was fun didn't roger from flying nun help you get on mtv yeah, Roger um, was, that's very true. Uh, Roger was instrumental in getting my showreel to a guy called Brent Hansen, who's a friend of mine now, who's a, a New Zealander who at the time was running MTV Europe. And uh, Roger was the guy who said to him, you should check this guy out. So yeah, that's very true. And I've been forever grateful for that. And I have another gift for you regarding the history of New Zealand rock. This is Ugly Things, all about the New Zealand tour of The Pretty Things in 1965. Yeah, 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 that's right. There is a long history of New Zealand rock and roll, isn't there? Yeah, there is, man. Oh, great music has always been made in New Zealand, and it's, it has a very unique sound. And in particular, Flying Nun had a very, very specific sound. It sounded like where it was made, you know? And this is all about the tour. The entire zine is about the Pretty Things tour of New Zealand, and that is a gift for you. I can't believe it. You've just been so generous, and I've been looking forward to this for a long time to see what, what, what treats you'd bring. And I have a further gift for you, Zine Lowe. The Cordy's on Flying Nun. Which is great. And um, it, look at that logo. It's so legendary. Still going. Still going, man. Well, why would it stop? It no. keeps on rocking. So they're from Vancouver, a Canadian connection. Yeah, which is great. Which we have right now, Canadian-New Zealand connection. Exactly. Can I pull a vinyl out and take a look? Colored vinyl. Yeah, I was hoping. That's Only the best on Flying Nun. I was like, look at that, man. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And the Courtney's were fascinated by the Flying Nun sound zine. And I have another gift for you. Another Courtney's record right here. Australia and... New Zealand Tour Edition. And that got them on, basically, on Flying Nun. That is from Hockey Dad Records, but you have a lot of Courtney's. Wow, we do, man. There's, um, this, is a, this is incredible. Look at this, man. I love this. Thank you for this. I'm really excited. And I have another gift for you. What can you say about the Bomb Squad? Oh, man. And this is actually produced by yeah. DJ Muggs. Muggs. Yeah, that's right. This is one of my favorite rap records ever, Calling in Cali. To this day, samples the Sly and the Family Stone joint. Uh, I love this this album and this song so much. And um, yeah, uh, DJ Mug, early DJ Mugs, there he is in his shorts on the beach. But I love this track. It's a massive record for you me. You get a chance to talk to this? Yeah, that oh, is for you. God, I'm so excited. Thank you so have much. Have you talked to Mugs about this record? I have talked to Mugs about this record. Yeah, I do. I don't really remember what he said, but I remember I sort of uh, I, I, I asked him about it because, um, like I said, it's just one of my favorite beats ever. Um, and I was a fan of DJ Mugs from the, from the minute I heard this. I love this record so much and that is for you thank you so much i'm thrilled zeno did cheese stop gonzo no what stopped gonzo was that um it just the kind of music that we were playing and the artists that we were talking to it sort of plateaued a little bit and we sort of felt like um maybe talking about cheese felt like it was a little inappropriate because it wasn't as it wasn't going as well um and also you know i i wanted to kind of evolve the show and they did mtv didn't want to do that they wanted to keep it as it was so we just decided to part ways have radio pluggers ever been right 
Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. But you can't be right all the time because it's a surprise. Everything's a surprise, right? You, you want to be surprised by what's successful over time. You can't, you can't pick it. You can't put it in a bottle. You work for Apple, right? I do work for Apple, yeah. Have you been taught any kind of like Easter eggs on the iPhone? Are there any secrets? You mean like an off-menu? Yes. <laughs> like an in-and-out when you go off-menu? No, I don't know any, any, any sort of, uh, sort of ba- different fe- features or functions. In fact, I'm actually not the best person to talk to about functions on an iPhone because I'm not I'm not really my kids are like much you don't have a back room that they take you in <laughs> no. and show you the eggs <laughs> no. no not at all there's no off menu items there's no off menu items where are we right now we're in Austin Texas and what house are we in this is called Apple House Apple Music House and what room is this this is actually I think this is Brian and Robert and everyone this is like a little private room for people to come and talk I think how have you been enjoying South By like doing the keynote yeah. doing interviews you haven't had a lot of time to check out bands. I'll tell you the truth, like, like this hasn't been the most relaxing South by for me because number one, I had to do this keynote thing, which was stressful, and I really wanted it to be as good as it could be. And number two, I, was, I knew I was going to be meeting you, and I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Zine. Anything- is that it? I don't want it to end. No, this is so good. Anything you want to add to the people out there at all? No, it's uh, it's been really. Thank you so much for your generosity, and uh, thank you for asking to speak with me. It's a, it's, it's an honor, Nadwa. Well, I really appreciate the kind words, Zane Lowe, and keep on rocking in the free world. And do do loot do, do do.